good morning folks hope you're keeping well thank you for coming back good to see you it's a beautiful morning this morning the sun's coming up over that direction a bit of a hazy horizon there slightly misty start this morning out here in Teletubby land just wandered in down there dropped in through that little gate there just there I uh, seen one huge owl this morning it just came up out the field over in that direction somewhere where am I pointing uh, over about there flew up swooped round, and then headed into the trees but it was massive it must have had a five foot wingspan whatever it was I'm not sure it was an owl and I uh, scared a couple of hares down there first thing so that was a nice wake up call for them <laughs> right today I'm headed into this woodland uh, very very old place this trail is known to be well over a thousand years old it's a boundary trail running basically north south halfway down there's a small hill and it's a recognized Viking meeting site it's where apparently the Vikings would congregate congregate from different clans and they'd come to resolve disputes there it was like a, a court so quite a heavy place quite a, a serious location but it's, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, through the centuries, up and down this trail, there's signs of man's impact just down here actually. On the right, there's a, a cross where some, I'm not sure what it is, but it, it's some of the original founding stones for a chapel were built. I think that's somewhere like the 15th century. And there's all kinds of history here. At the, at the far end in particular, the north end of this trail, there are three ducal estates. And it's, there's 30,000 acres today. I think there would have been more than that in their day. But 30,000 plus acres of ancient share wood were, were chopped up and sold off to the, to the aristocracy. And uh, they fed roots into this trail where that hill is so where the old viking like viking where all the viking meeting site is that's interesting where the old viking meeting site is they they all had trails that fed to that location and that's what interests me about this is there are many routes into it but there are no real routes through it <laughs> it's quite strange there's a gravity here something not here but just a little further down the trail there's something about it draws people and has done for millennia it's uh, very old very beautiful we've got a, a mixture of all kinds of treeage there's um, some ornamental trees that were planted in the Victorian era perhaps even before that Georgian era and, um, and then we've got ancient oaks some of them up to thousand plus years old which is what I hope to grab a shot or two of today. The light is, it's okay right now. In fact, it's quite perfect right, right now, but it's changing minute by minute. And the temperature today is due to get up to the 28, 30 degree mark. We've got four days of thunder and lightning storms coming. So that's gonna be a little bit disruptive. I shan't be getting much shooting done for the rest of this week I don't think so that's what I'm going to do today I'm going to make the most of this time that I have and I'm going to shoot I'm just going to try and find things to to pick up and as I do as usual I'll bring you back with anything of note and just explain to you my thought process so uh, I'm going to get a wiggle on and try and make something of this early morning light so I'll catch you in a bit Thanks. I don't know what that is. Very odd. <laughs> anyway, I've got an unusual composition here. It's 
So, dude, it's not funny. Really unusual composition. I mean, you got one chance, no more. Bear with me. <sighs> oh, he's just moved. Right, unusual composition. I've got uh, the GoPros um, <laughs> it's not going to let me do this, is it? So, I think if I angle that down, it might do it more justice. <clears throat> really, what grabbed my eye is that we have numerous trees all leaning up towards the top of the canopy. And in the background, there's a silver birch and what looks like a beach or something next to it that emphasise it even more. So there's a very triangular perspective. Pack it in. What will make this work or not work is the final image. I just don't know at this point whether or not it's going to make a shot. In any case, I've got a composition on camera, so I'll show you what that is now. Essentially, I've got a small amount of fern at the bottom of the screen there as a border. I've got this larger tree. What is that? This larger tree here on the left sweeps upwards towards the top of frame, almost a third over. The one on the right there does something very similar, sweeps up to the left, almost a third in. And then in centre of frame, almost centre of frame, we have those two distant trees mimicking, mimicking that uh, perspective. I like it. I like it a lot. Whether it works or not is another matter. At the moment, I'm at f11. I've manually focused, and I've focused in on. I've manually focused in, almost centre of frame. I'll just tweak that. I'm at two and a half second exposure at f11. I'm at exposure, 0.0, .0 stops, ISO 50. The light has dropped from when I took the first shot. It was brighter. I have a sneaky feeling that it's just getting brighter now. It's just being dialed up. I have a sneaky feeling having this a little bit darker will help. It'll help me bring out the highlights on the silver birch in the background. And that's the thing that helps me here is that those trees in the background will take the light. I'll be able to draw that up in post-processing. The foreground I'm not too worried about. That can be soft because that's just, just leading the eye into centre of frame when we've got these two trees in the background. So everything's pointing to the, to the heavens. I like that. I kind of like that. It's different and anything in nature that's different is cool in my book it is anyway <laughs> so i don't know what to do i don't know whether to wait for the light again or i might do i might just kick around here for 10 minutes see what happens with the light there's a little bit more coming into the canopy now see some bright spots in the top there it's quite it's quite dank here in the the forest floor quite dark dreary gray and as soon as we get up there we get that burst of sunlight some blue sky in the background which won't be too much of a distraction it might make for a nice shot i'm not sure we'll have to wait and see but i think i'll kick about i'll take another shot or two of a similar elk to that so it'll be around f11 f8 to f f8 to f11 motivates me this one right I'll crack on, take these shots, and pop it up now. See you in a bit. Now 
it's coming thick and fast today. I'm really enjoying being out here at the moment. The light is, uh, there's a lot of old oaks in here and because we're at the cusp of the changing season from summer to the very, very beginning of autumn, there's some lovely orange tones in the canopy and we're getting some of those like paler, almost blue greens from the underside of the leafage and it just makes for a really, really attractive canopy. And I do love canopy shots. If I could just shoot canopy, I think I'd be happy. The problem with it, spiders everywhere. The problem with it is the sky. And at the moment, the sun is where you are. And um, it's just up, just up there. And apart from all this loveliness behind me, one thing that I have a personal fondness for is the mixture of oak and pine. I like it where there are scenes of both and if there's an opportunity to shoot the tall nature of the pines with this gnarly nature of these old oaks I'm all on it. I'm, I'm all over it. Just bring me more. Bear with me I've just got to, I've just got to take this shot. I'll be back in a second. I'm really sorry about that. I, uh, <laughs> I just got the sun, as I was mentioning where it was, it literally just lifted like a blanket being lifted off it and the sun hit some oak leaves on the left, I'll show you. So I'm at the moment focused on a oaks here and the, the pines in the background, I'll show you in a second on camera, but it's on, on this leafage here on the side and those pines. The GoPro doesn't do it justice. I just had to flip from portrait to landscape, spin around and try and capture a landscape orientation with a light on the left and then this beautiful scene in front of me. I think it's beautiful, I know it's not going to be to everyone's taste. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Composition. It's something along those lines. I literally have the forest floor giving me a, a grounding there, a foundation, and you can just see here some light on the, the floor. There are two beautiful pine trees, one single limb, trunk, and one that forks into a double and between them off center which is nice i don't like symmetry very often sometimes it's okay but not very often uh, so having those two predominant pine trees i was just checking they were both pines they are off to the left and this double here on the right it just really makes for a lovely scene now the foreground is going to be dark because we've got a lot of sky in there but we have got these huge pines in the background these oaks in the foreground and this balanced out duality at the front this shot as it stands i'm focused i'm at f9 giving me a sensible depth of field i'll probably end up with the oaks reasonably sharp but the mid ground and some of the, the the pines in the background there should be sharp that's giving me a half second exposure I'm at exposure, zero stops, ISO 50. So we'll see. We'll see if that's a shot or not. But so beautiful, so beautiful. And having that little bit of light interest in the background, the pines in the midground, the oaks in the foreground, balanced with the forest floor, it sounds, if you read it on a menu, like a nice image. But, uh, they can be deceiving. Sometimes, you know, I can be really excited and motivated on camera. I get it back into Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever, and yeah, it, it goes south fast. Equally, sometimes I'll take shots out here and I think there's nothing going to come of it. I get it back and I go, you know what? I can do something with this. It looks really nice or interesting or whatever. But these oaks are mega. So that's another one I can play with. Similar to the previous one so I want something a bit different now if I get just one more I'll try and bring you back uh, talk you through it so I'll catch you in a bit I'm going off piece again <laughs> beautiful light coming in now Hitting the floor, kind of be getting more light. I'm not going to have a lot of time now. I think it's going to start and get a little bit too, a little bit too um, harsh. 
But right now we're good. And there's a tree. There's a tree I have to get to. I need to get up to my right. And you know, the further I get up there, I think the less of a shot I'm going to have. But I'm battling with this stuff. If I want to get to where I want to go to. I think and I need to get over there there's no sign of any paths it's just going to get denser and denser it drops off down a hill there let's go this way oh man it's all good fun isn't it I'm just going to have to plug on Oh, easy. Oh, grief. Getting in's one thing. It's getting out. It's going to be a, a next. You don't get many dog walkers through here. These massive ears. GoPro. Junk. I think it's going to beat me from this side. Okay, what was I aiming to do then? There's an oak tree here that's hollow. It's got a doorway at the base of it, like the major oak. It's got a canopy. It's growing this year. But it's so heavily protected by all this fernage. This is about, I would say this is about four foot, five foot deep six foot in places some of these ferns are as tall as I am I've got squirrels everywhere pine there and then an oak this fella he's amazing but he's the guy I wanted him and I just don't think I can get there this is way too dense it's uh Hard to give you the perspective, but treading on really loose stuff, it's, it sinks a long way and these ferns are holding me back. That's a shame. That's a shame. So what do I do? And often this is the case, you know, you've got to have to make a decision based on how much light I've got, how much time I'm likely to have, and how much effort it's going to take to get to where I wanted to get to. Do you know what I've decided to do? Uh, is I'll come back for this tree in autumn when the leaves have turned brown and the, the ferns died back a little bit. Uh, It'll just be that much easier to get through this and I might be able to get in from the other side. I know there's a trail over in that direction. I'm not sure how far away it is, but I know where I am. I'll remember it and I'll be back here for sure. Oh, he's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Beautiful, beautiful tree. It's like being six again. Love it. not gonna happen is it today I never get through there so I'm gonna I'm gonna make my way back to the path hopefully and then as I wander up that way I'll uh, I know where there's a uh, uh, an oak on the trail I always like to get a shot from him because the lights so variable there and uh, it will give me a chance to do a different type of shot. I'll do a, I'll do a, a multi-shot. I'll either do a vertical pano or a 
lateral panel. So I'll make my way up there and I'll bring you back when I <laughs> dug my way out of this mess. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Okay then folks, third shot. Um, <laughs> plenty of brambles in my legs, uh, a few other spiky things, one or two bites. But on the whole, we're doing good. Perfectly good log over here. Well, three logs actually. I could have rested my tripod. tripod. I could have rested my tripod on any one of them. But uh, no, I end up back here in the sharp spiky spiny stuff which I needed to do because the tree in front of me splays out huge limb to the right huge limb to the left beautiful canopy I love this tree he's awesome just awesome the light isn't really helping just now because there's one or two highlights, bright spots in the background. The, there's a few bright, bright spots in the canopy and a couple of bits here and there that are just, it's not soft. It's got areas that are a bit tricky, but it doesn't mean there's not a decent shot. It's just a little bit more intricate. So I've been paused, I've been waiting and watching the light and now there's a plane coming over. <laughs> What I've decided to do is take a three shot vertical panorama. I'll just wait for this plane to pass. Yeah, he's gone. Nearly gone. Three shot vertical panorama, which mm -mm -mm, looks a little something like this. I am focused. I'll focus on the highlight in the centre of the trunk and I'm at f8 so that's f8 quarter of a second at exposure ISO 50 and now what I'm going to do is gently I hope my camera doesn't drop I'm using this tree here on the left hand side as a measure as a guide and I'm tilting my camera back so that I've got a good overlap I know the bottom of this frame was the top of the previous frame not easy to do with one hand let's try it again so there I'm locking my tripod off I'm not going to refocus I'm just going to take my shot and then I'm going to do it one more time, noting what's at the top of this frame will then be overlapped at the bottom of this frame. I'm not changing anything. Right, so that's a, a one, two, three shot vertical pano. F8 quarter of a second at exposure ISO 50. I'm always manual, I always shoot manual. I say always, there are exceptions, but my uh, little dial there is always on M. Exposure compensation doesn't matter when you're shooting manual. So the idea with this is that I'll stitch these three images together in Lightroom that will give me the full width of the canopy left and right branches and I've had to come this far back to get that width with this lens. I don't have my wide lens yet I mentioned this in a previous video I've got a new 18mm lens I, I received the first one I took some test shots and I considered it very soft so I've sent it back for a replacement hopefully that comes this week I should get some news today tomorrow Fingers crossed that comes soon, I'll be able to do some wider shots. That would have helped me today. I could have got closer for a single composition, uh, sorry, a single frame. Probably got really close and angled up, but I can't do that with a 50mm prime. 
but what I can do with a 50mm prime is get far enough back so the full width is in frame and take three shots to give me the full image. I'll stitch them together, pop it up now. Okay then folks, that's me. That's a wrap for today. I, uh, I'm going to take a, a two shot portrait um, pano here as well. So vertical orientation. Previous one was landscape and three tall. This is portrait and two wide. So one to the left, one to the right. I'll process those shots, pop them up one after the other and uh, let me know which you prefer in there comments below it would be interesting to know which way swings it for a 50 mil prime but a uh, beautiful subject but for today and these soaring temperatures um, I'm going to make my way out so thank you very much for watching please take care of one another and as ever if you can't be good just be careful I'll see you soon take care bye for now